We're back now with former Attorney General Eric Holder. Mr. Attorney General, thank you again for, for doing this. Sure. Um, today, you were at an event in Washington, D.C., and uh, after your remarks, you were asked um, by Politico.com, a reporter for Politico, whether you thought Special Counsel Robert Mueller has enough evidence to prosecute President Trump for obstruction of justice. Uh, you told Politico today, quote, is there a technical case there now? I think so, now. Um, why did you say that? What, what did you base that on? Well, I, I think you're talking about a technical case as opposed to one that you might bring now. If one looks at um, the dismissal of James Comey and the reasons why the president told Lester Holt he did that, uh, if you look at the president's uh, attempts to try to get people who were the heads of the intelligence agencies to get involved in this matter, uh, if you look at the president's actions on the airplane with regard to that statement, there are a variety of other things. I think you technically have a, a case of obstruction of justice. I, I'm, not at all, I'm not saying that this is a case that you would necessarily bring at this point, and I don't know what other evidence um, the special counsel has, but I think just on the basis of what has been reported in the media and assuming that, that uh, those reports are accurate, I do think that you have a, a a technical case of obstruction of justice. If you were attorney general right now, um, you would be overseeing Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation the way that Rod Rosenstein is right now. And as I understand it, that means that the special counsel has to come to uh, Mr. Rosenstein with important investigative decisions, opening up new lines of investigation, also significant advances in the case like bringing charges against somebody. Um, if you were in that oversight role, what kind of a process would you go through? How would you evaluate what to do if the special counsel came to you and said, I plan to charge the president of the United States with obstruction of justice? How, how would somebody in that kind of an oversight role decide whether or not that was a proper decision? Well, I think you'd have to look at the um, relevant um, interpretations that of the various statutes and policies that exist within the Justice Department. There are Office of Legal Counsel opinions that deal with the question of whether or not a sitting president can be indicted, and so you certainly want to look at those. But I also know that there are opinions that take a contrary view uh, that were prepared by the uh, special counsel in the Watergate matter, Leon Jaworski, as well as Ken Starr. I'd want to look at those as well and ultimately make a determination. Uh, if the request from the special counsel was to indict, make a determination on the basis of all the um, examinations that I would do as to whether uh, I would allow the special counsel to proceed in, uh, in that way. Is it your view that a president could be indicted? It's not settled law. Um, and, uh, you know, I looked at all of those, um, looked at all of those opinions, and uh, it, it seems to me that there are some, I think, fairly, um, I, I think some fairly persuasive um, arguments that can be made that a president can be um, indicted. Now, you know, the, the, the controlling uh, opinion, at least at this point, is the one from the Office of Legal Counsel, which says that that, in fact, is not, not correct. Uh, I've read that opinion, and I have some issues with it, hmm. um, but uh, it is not settled law at this point. Um, we are in some uncharted territory in terms of the relationship between the president and the justice system. In the last few months, we've watched the president and some of his supporters in Congress really try to work to discredit the FBI um, around the investigations into the president and his campaign, but also sort of in general. In several cases, they have called out and concerted uh, in, in concerted efforts, they've called out by name specific FBI officials. Um, the case of Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe, he was essentially pressured out of bureau. He retired last month. Uh, he's 49 years old. Um, there have also been concerted pressure campaigns against other named senior Justice Department and FBI officials. W when you're in charge of the Justice Department and something like that arises, I know you didn't have to face that same kind of thing, but is there something that an attorney general or that other people in positions of authority can do to deal with those kinds of attacks? Would there be, is there more that an attorney general or anybody else could have done to shield the FBI and senior Justice Department officials from the kind of pressure that they've been getting? That is the exact role that an attorney general has. You're supposed to shield your people from political pressure. And the thing, one of the things that disturbs me the most uh, is the fact that this attorney general has, for whatever reason, been relatively silent. Uh, when attacks are going uh, against career people at the FBI, career people at the United States Department of Justice, I have to think that the leadership at the department knows that these are spurious attacks, that they're inconsistent with uh, the, the reputations that these people have, the way in which they've conducted themselves over the years. And those voices, those leadership voices, need to be heard in defense of the people who they supervise. It's a privilege 
to be Attorney General of the United States, uh, what you have to do if you are the AG is protect the values that define the, um, the institution and the people who define that institution. If the Attorney General fails at that, um, is there a plan B in terms of doing the most to uphold the rule of law, to uphold the independence of law enforcement when an Attorney General doesn't take that heat? What else, what are our other options as a country? Well, you know, our institutions are, are, are strong. Um, our, our norms are, are being tested, but they are also strong. The people who work in the department, the people who work at the FBI are, are strong, and they will continue to conduct themselves in appropriate ways. They will uh, make tough decisions and conduct investigations, um, but they do so under a pressure that I think is in some ways unnecessary in the sense that an attorney general might blunt some of it. But look, but the real problem here is the president. The president going after named career people, the president saying um, things about the integrity of the, those two institutions, the Justice Department, the, the FBI. Uh, no other president has ever said those, those kinds of things, um, conducted himself in that way, and he's doing long-term harm to the um, reliability, the integrity of the uh, Justice Department and to the FBI. Long after he's gone, we will see the impact of, uh, of these attacks. Would you make a better president? <laughs> How was that? It was pretty, it was pre pretty good, the way I snuck that in there, right? Uh, that's, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I, I think any one of my kids would make a better president than, uh, than, Don, than Donald Trump. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there are any number of people who would be a better president than uh, the person we now have uh, in, in the White House who has, uh, you know, as I said, broken through those norms, conducted himself in a way that's inconsistent with uh, what's best about this nation. Um, you know, labeled uh, people um, in, in very uh, inappropriate ways, used inappropriate terms when talking about countries, um, turning his back on our immigrant heritage. Um, yeah, there are any number of people who I think would be a better president than, uh, than Donald Trump. Are you going to think seriously about running this year, sir? Well, I'm focusing um, on the NRDC, making sure that uh, with regard to redistricting, I'm focusing my efforts there. Uh, and I will make a decision at the uh, end of this year about uh, what I want to do uh, with regard to higher office. Eric Holder, former attorney general during the Obama administration, now the chairman of the National Democratic Redistricting Committee. Uh, thanks for being with us tonight. I know you're super busy, sir. I really appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, thanks. for having me, Rachel. All right. Uh, still ahead here tonight. Um, the surprise resignation at the White House today from a top presidential staffer uh, who we learned today didn't have a security clearance for his entire time in office. Uh, and that may have been because of the serious accusations from both of his ex-wives um, that he engaged in domestic violence during those relationships uh, and that that information was conveyed to the FBI. Um, that story's next. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.